The thing that I thought would be hardest, currently is the hardest, which is the uh, creating a fully reusable orbital heat shield, which has never been done before. Elon Musk just laid it out in his latest interview. Out of all the challenges SpaceX is facing, the one giving him the biggest headache is Starship's heat shield. Well, that might sound a bit surprising. After all, SpaceX already has solid experience with heat shields. Both Dragon and Starship have survived re-entry just fine. So, why is Elon calling this the hardest challenge? And what's SpaceX's game plan to solve the problem? Let's break down on today's episode of Alpha Tech. During the X Takeover 2025 event at the San Mateo County Event Center in California, Elon Musk jumped on a live stream interview to drop a few SpaceX updates, from the likely delay of the first upper stage catch by Makezilla to next year, to the tough technical hurdles of in-orbit propellant transfer, and even long-term dreams like building glass-domed homes on Mars. But beyond all the hype, one thing stood out. Musk spent a solid six minutes just talking about how brutally hard the Starship project still is. And interestingly, the biggest challenge he mentioned wasn't the technical stuff you'd expect, not the vibration resonance issues, not the Pez door, not even the COPV tanks. It was the heat shield system. That's right, a technology that's been around for 75 years, dating all the way back to NASA's Mercury program and similar Soviet efforts to send humans and satellites into orbit. But doesn't that sound a little ironic? I mean, SpaceX has already made some serious breakthroughs with heat shield technology, arguably better than what NASA's using. Take Orion's Avcoat, for example. Compare that to SpaceX's PICAX tiles, which have been optimized for reusability. Or even the ceramic tiles on Starship, they're incredibly lightweight, yet tough as hell. Unfortunately, we haven't really seen how the upper stage heat shield holds up after re-entry because the vehicle usually blows up before it gets a chance to land. But data from Starship Flight 5 clearly shows that those ceramic tiles can take the serious heat, enough to protect the vehicle during re-entry. So why, despite all of that, does Elon Musk still say the heat shield is the single biggest challenge facing SpaceX right now? Well, the answer is actually pretty straightforward. Starship is built to be fully reusable, but its heat shield just can't keep up. Not yet. Right now, Starship is covered in around 18,500 ceramic tiles, and as the vehicle grows in size with future versions, that number will only go up. These tiles are installed using robotically pre-positioned pins. The process is fairly simple. They're just pushed into place. Each tile has small holes that connect to metal studs, allowing them to float slightly over the structure. That floating gap is actually a clever feature. It gives the tiles room to move as the stainless steel body beneath them expands or contracts, reducing the risk of cracking unlike the more complex, rigid setup used on the space shuttle. Beneath every tile, there's also a secondary insulation layer made from ceramic felt, usually silica or alumina fibers. It's not the main heat protection system, but it can still withstand temps of up to 1000 degrees Celsius, adding an extra buffer. SpaceX has designed the heat shield tiles to sit as close together as possible to minimize heat leakage through the gaps, but not so close that they risk clashing when the vehicle flexes during flight. But here's the trade-off. Ceramic, while lightweight and heat resistant, doesn't handle repeated stress very well. Over time, tiles can crack or even shatter from intense vibrations, especially after several flights. Elon Musk once joked it's like gluing a bunch of dinner plates onto a violently shaking rocket. And then there's thermal cycling, the constant expansion and contraction from extreme temperature swings. That can gradually wear the tiles down. After each flight, engineers have to inspect every single tile by hand. Some make it through just fine. Others get chipped, cracked, or fall off during re-entry. That means more labor, more cost, and longer turnaround times between missions. Exactly the kind of thing SpaceX is trying to eliminate on the road to full, rapid reusability. So, what Elon Musk really wants is a fully reusable, ultra-durable heat shield. One that can survive flight after flight without falling apart. And the truth is, in over 75 years of rocket history, no one has ever managed to make something like that. That's why SpaceX is now venturing into a completely new kind of technology. One so rare, there's barely any documentation on it. Normally, we wouldn't even know what they're working on, since SpaceX tends to keep things under wraps until the experiments yield promising results. 
but recently captured images of Ship 37 inside Mega Bay 2 have revealed some intriguing upgrades in the heat shield design they're currently testing. One of the most noticeable changes is at the nose cone, where small white circular markings have appeared on the thermal protection tiles. These are likely intentional reinforcements aimed at boosting durability in the areas that endure the most intense heat during re-entry. Ship 38 also shows similar markings, but with a key difference, the white lines between the tiles are much more visible. This suggests that SpaceX has upgraded the adhesive or sealant material between the tiles, possibly using a new glue or a more advanced heat-resistant compound. The goal is to reduce tile movement during flight and prevent heat leakage during re-entry. Another clear change is that the edges of the ceramic tiles now appear smoother and more tapered, a possible fix for the hot spots recorded during previous re-entry attempts. This design tweak could be directly linked to the white seams we're seeing, as both serve the same purpose, to create a more effective heat barrier. Beneath this outer shell, SpaceX is also focusing on improving the internal structure, including blade-like components designed to absorb and dissipate heat. Elon Musk himself has said that these changes could potentially double the durability of the thermal system. In short, SpaceX is still actively testing ceramic tiles to determine whether they can truly be reused multiple times with some new updates, before moving on to alternative materials, like converting stainless steel into a full-blown heat shield. Yes, stainless steel is actually part of SpaceX's recent experiments, as they've confirmed that several of these tiles, made from the same material used to build Starship's body, have now been installed in place of traditional ceramic ones. Originally, SpaceX planned to use these metal heat shield tiles along with a liquid-cooled system called transpiration cooling, which was first mentioned in 2019. The idea was to use perforated stainless steel panels that would spray out liquid methane or water, cooling the surface by essentially sweating to reduce re-entry heat. However, around July 2019, Elon Musk posted on X that SpaceX had decided to switch to thin ceramic tiles instead of metal because they're lighter and better suited for reusability goals. It's very likely that, after spending some time testing ceramic tiles, SpaceX might eventually circle back to those earlier ideas they once set aside. Logically speaking, the decision to use metal instead of ceramic stems from several advantages. First off, stainless steel 304L, the backbone of Starship, has proven its reliability across decades of industrial use withstanding temperatures up to 1,500 degrees Celsius. Ceramic tiles might have a higher melting point, around 1,600 to 2,000 degrees Celsius, but they're fragile, with tensile strength only around 10 to 50 megapascals. In contrast, metal heat shields can handle 500 to 700 megapascals and offer great ductility, making them far more resistant to intense vibration and impacts during launch or re-entry. While Starship's past test flights have lost 100 to 200 ceramic tiles each time, metal panels hold up better without shattering. On top of that, the metal tiles on Starship feature regenerative cooling using liquid methane flowing at 1,200 kilograms per second through microchannels to keep surface temperatures below the melting point. This massively extends the shield's lifespan through repeated flights, unlike ceramics, which often crack under thermal stress. Each metal tile is manufactured as a large panel, reducing the number of seams compared to the roughly 18,000 ceramic tiles used before, each one just 15 centimeters wide and costing $50 to $100. That means faster assembly at the Star Factory, lower maintenance costs, and simpler repairs. You can just weld or swap them out. All of this supports SpaceX's long-term goal of rapid turnaround, think hours, not days, between launches. And here's the kicker. They're cheaper, too. The 301L stainless steel that SpaceX uses costs about $2.80 per kilogram, on average, and even less when bought in bulk. Meanwhile, each modern ceramic tile, produced on a high-tech automated line, is estimated to cost between $20 and $50 a piece. With around 18,000 to 20,000 ceramic tiles needed to cover Starship's entire heat-facing surface, the total TPS cost can shoot up to $500,000 to over $1 million per vehicle. Incredibly expensive and resource intensive. And what do you get in return? Mainly that it's lighter than stainless steel. On the next flight, Starship Flight 10, 
these metal heat shield tiles will once again be put to the test. To be considered a success, the shield must protect the ship during ascent, withstand the harsh conditions of space, and most importantly, survive the brutal forces of re-entry with its structure intact, all the way to a safe splash down in the ocean. So, do you think ceramic heat shields could one day be completely replaced by stainless steel? If yes, drop a one in the comments below, or let me know what you think. Thank you. Back in that interview, Elon Musk didn't just talk about heat shields. He dropped some huge updates on what's next for SpaceX. First up, Mechazilla, that massive robotic arm at Starbase. Musk said they're aiming to catch the upper stage this year, or at least in the first half of next year. If they pull it off, Starship could be fully and rapidly reusable, something no space company has ever achieved. And when that happens, Musk believes launching 100 tons to orbit could be cheaper than a Falcon 1 flight back in the day, which only carried under a ton. Then Musk talked about the next crazy challenge, orbital refueling. Sounds simple, but getting two starships to fly side by side in space, connect, and transfer hundreds of tons of liquid oxygen in microgravity? No one's ever done it. If they succeed, it's the key to long-term missions to the moon, Mars, and beyond. He also touched on Falcon 9. Despite its success and reusability, must seem surprised that no other company had caught up. Most are still building expendable rockets, something he says is just not sustainable for the future of spaceflight. And finally, Mars. Musk envisions the first colonies as giant glass domes where humans can live and grow plants. Outside, you'll need a full protective suit. He might even develop a Mars-specific suit, radiation-proof, dust-resistant, oxygen-supplying, but in the long run, he believes the people living there will form their own society, not one controlled by any Earth-based government. And when asked, why go to Mars? He smiled and said, because it's inspiring. More than that, he sees it as life insurance for humanity in case of a global disaster. And maybe, just maybe, it gives us something greater to look up to instead of just looking down at our phones.